Hi everyone. <clears throat> in this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to take a look at the factors that may predict difficulty in mask ventilation. Now this is important because as I tell all medical students and residents, even if you can't intubate somebody, you can always mask ventilate them and wait for them to wake up. But if you can't mask ventilate, then you're in trouble. Therefore, recognizing which patients could pose potential problems with mask ventilation, uh, being able to identify them is extremely important in the world of anesthesia. There's really not going to be a lot of um, drawings in this. Uh, it's more so going to be just a brief list and discussion of a couple of topics and reasons for why they uh, pose an issue with mask ventilation. So the first one we're going to look at is uh, BMI greater than 30. So patients with BMIs greater than 30 uh, have been found sometimes to have redundant oral tissue, large facial anatomy, which makes it difficult to maintain a proper CE grip on the jaw and a good seal, as well as proper mandibular protrusion uh, to open the airway, which we do. Next, Malampati scores of three to four have also been implicated in difficult mask ventilations. Next, age over 57. And unfortunately, I've had a difficult time identifying why this is the case, but studies do demonstrate that it is a ra risk factor. Next, Next, limited jaw protrusion. <clears throat> slash, or what's called subluxation. And what this is, is the patient's inability to create an underbite. So they can't put their bottom teeth over their upper lip. And this may be linked to the inability to, again, open the airway adequately with a jaw lift once the patient's uh, airway relaxes and kind of the tongue and tissue fall backwards. Remember that when mask ventilating, you're not pushing the mask to the patient's mouth, but rather you're lifting the patient's jaw to the mask, thus opening the airway. So if the patient has poor jaw protrusion, then it makes it more difficult to open that airway and to move air. Next is snoring or patients with known sleep apnea. Again, this often indicates excess or redundant oral tissue or a large tongue that may collapse under general anesthesia and obstruct the airway when relaxed. Uh, next is a beard. And anybody who's tried to mask ventilate a patient with a thick beard, you've probably seen this. And this is in part because it makes it very difficult to create a seal with the mask around the patient's airway. The hair creates a barrier between the mask and the skin through which air can escape. Again, making mask ventilation significantly more difficult. And the last one I have for this list is no teeth or being edentulous. And with these patients, their gums may almost cause a suction effect, sealing the mouth almost closed when you attempt to ventilate them. Having teeth, on the other hand, makes it easier to mask ventilate as it basically stents the mouth open, the gums open, allowing air to pass freely between the teeth and around them. Uh, it's recommended in patients without teeth to put an oral airway in to facilitate easier mask ventilation. Patients with multiple risk factors for difficult mask ventilation should be evaluated appropriately, and it's important to have an extra pair of hands in the room if there is any thought that after the patient goes to sleep, you will have difficulty moving air. That way you have some help. In some extreme cases, if there is thought of difficult mass ventilation and intubation, practitioners may elect to induce patients with agents that will maintain ventilation on their own so as to decrease the risk of apnea and need for mask ventilation. Or they even may opt for awake intubations that can be performed with topicalization of the airway. 
Amongst all of these factors, BMI and beards are the only modifiable factors. So I'm just going to go ahead and give them a star each. And it is recommended before patients go for surgery that they shave their beards if it's possible or lose weight prior to surgery so as to decrease their BMI. That's all for predictors of difficult mass ventilation. As always, if you have questions or concerns, please feel free to contact us. Feel free to subscribe to the channel below by clicking the subscribe button. Or if you're interested in participating or getting involved, please feel free to contact us. Otherwise, tune in for the next video.